So guys, listen, I'm out here in St. Paul's and I'm literally just outside the old Ted Baker store which has been stripped out. Why? Because they have just gone into administration with over 1,000 members of staff left in Lingo. Now this was a big store right here in the middle of central London, not too far from Bank and i thought i'd go down there and do a little store tour but i was surprised to see that it's already been stripped out and closed down what is going on with the uk high street with so many leading brands so many retailers just seem to be biting the bullet and going into administration or they're getting gobbled up by the larger players it's so sad even maplin's there as well they've even gone under so many different brands have gone under and it's really sad so guys what i thought i would do is i thought i would just make my way down to regent street where we have one of the ted baker stores that are still open and i thought i'd go and check it out but whilst i was here i thought you know what i'd pay a little homage and give you guys a brief history into ted baker and basically give you the rise and fall of ted baker to understand what has happened with the brand Ted Baker's been around for such a long time. It was actually established back in 1987 by a chap called Ray Kelvin. Now, he, uh, he actually opened his first store in Glasgow, so it's a Glaswegian brand, and that was back in 1988. After that, he went and opened a store in Manchester and then followed by Nottingham. And in 1990, they went and opened their first store trading in London in Covent Garden. So during those times, um, Ted Baker grew rapidly. It was a really, really strong brand at the time and really doing quite well. A lot of people don't know that the name of the brand was actually derived from Ray Kelvin that's the founder he had created this alter ego in his younger years called Ted Baker and he kind of kept with that and that is how the name came around now Ted Baker although it started off as a menswear brand it actually moved into women's wear and accessories in 1995 and that proved to be really successful for Ted Baker because they're actually really popular with their female following um, they continue to be popular right through from 19 right up until 2015 around about that time and by 2017 they went ahead and purchased a head office in London for around 55 million. Ted Baker is not without its issues actually the founder Ray Kelvin himself got into a bit of trouble where he was getting accused by staff members for just being a bit too intimate let's say and there was, there was a 300 um, signature petition that he, he needs to leave the company and he was actually ousted from the company and he left and people say since he left the direction of the brand has literally taken a bit of a plummet in 2022 ted baker was acquired by authentic brands who owns reebok and literally since then the the, the brand has not been doing very well at all actually for a number of years it hasn't really been doing very well even when i was walking around the store just to check, kind of check out some of the items it, it the stuff looked really dated it reminded me of when i used to work for french connection back in the very very late 90s early 2000s and to be honest with you looking at the menswear stuff the style of this of the clothing it, it doesn't seem to have moved on. It kind of, it's kind of stayed where it is through all this time. So to be honest with you, uh, it, it, what people say is when these kind of recessions and tough times come, it just kills off a lot of the brands that were not really doing well and were struggling anyway. Now, although I do like Ted Baker, I mean, I never really bought much of their stuff, but you know, they're a bit of a heritage brand, so I do like them, but they clearly just did not move on from the times. We can't always blame things on flannels and Mike Ashley and, you know, all this type of stuff. Sometimes stores don't move on. I mean, if you look at the, if you look at the items, they look very, very dated and it, it, they look very drab, I'm sorry to say. Now, not in saying that, they did still, still do have a big fan base, particularly with a lot of females who liked a lot of their jackets and the accessories and things like that. And to be fair to Dead Baker, they've, they've done well for a very, very long time. They're one of the few British brands that have managed to like pull their way through, through all of this time. So, I mean, a fair play to them, but it's just unfortunate that now that they've actually had to wind up and gone into administration now it's actually just their European and UK arm that's gone into administration which has 46 stores uh, across the UK and across Europe and it's seeming like 
everything's just going to get shut down and unfortunately the staff that are working there might lose their jobs. This, this is actually a really sad time for British retail at the moment. We are witnessing British retail change right before our very eyes and it's, it's, it's quite sad and I think a lot of people don't really realise what's going on but the face of retail is just not going to be the same within the next five to 10 years it's it's literally just going to seeming to me like it's just going to be a lot of large players that have just consolidated the market and it, it, consumers might be forced to have less choice in the market and less competitive pricing which again is it, it's quite sad we've had so many retailers have just gone um whether it was uh, Brother to Brother, Z & Co, even the massive matches fashion, which was a billion, over a billion pound valuation at one point with head offices over in London Bridge, uh, you know, average basket of like 250 to 300 pounds spend and on average basket. I mean, they were a major player back in the day and even they have gone now. I will be doing a video on them um, shortly with the rise and fall of matches fashion. But it, it just seemed that even though Ted Baker had been doing well for so long, they just couldn't keep up with the times. And suddenly, you know, things have just haven't done too well. Now, the holding company that manages them, they are called... Now, the holding company that manages them called No Ordinary Design Label um, says they, they were making a loss of 45 million despite having sales of around 300 million. Now, Ted Baker was, is normally known, known for its quirky, smart, casual wear, floral prints, suits and blazers. And although the brand was initially started as a menswear brand, it, it became quite popular with women after the launch of their women's wear range in 1995. So, um, yeah, guys, another sad one for this one. Ted Baker, which has been around for well over 30 years, since 1988, and it's also a Scottish brand as well, has finally kicked kicked the bucket. Is that the saying? It's to, to bit the bullet? I don't know, mate. It's, it's just passed out, it's, and it's just gone. And to be honest with you, it, it's just quite sad to see some of these heritage um, brands and retailers which have been around since like the 80s and things like that just dwindling away and uh, just disappearing from the high street. But anyway, guys, listen, I wanted to give you some quick information on that one. I hope you enjoyed the video, but I will be covering more of these stores that unfortunately are closing down because I think it would be good for us to archive it and have a discussion about it, okay? But anyway, that's enough for the video, guys. I hope to see you soon. Catch you in a bit. Peace.